The only people who don't want to disclose the truth are people with something to hide. One of the things that happened in the search for who is Barack Obama was the arrival of a birth certificate. Who do you believe did it? Well, let me preface this by saying there are I have I've had three names three names running through my head over the last couple of years. All are women. Um, the first, who I've now pretty much excluded, is Bernardine Dorn, the wife of Bill Ayers, the terrorist. Dorn, when she was with the Students for Democratic Society and the Weathermen, she was the forger and identity theft expert for the Weathermen. So when people need to flee from the police, hide from the FBI, her job, one of her jobs, was to help them create their false identities. So that crossed my mind. Uh, and there's, there's some suggestion that uh, the forger was a woman from some of the investigations going on. So... She had crossed my mind, but I ruled her out partly because by 2011, when Trump started making a fuss about it and the document, the so-called document, was released, I think the Obamas and the heirs had already had a falling out for a variety of reasons. So that was one. The other thought was Valerie Jarrett. Now, Val Valerie Jarrett, who I call Val Sputin, is uh, Obama's closest aide. Remember what they call Hillary. They call her the Hilda Beast. Did you read that? Hilda. They call her the Hilda oh, yeah, Beast. Yeah, Hilda Beast. Yeah. And, uh, but, but Val Sputin, Valerie Jarrett, was a slum ward in Chicago. In fact, her, father, her grandfather was Robert Taylor, after whom the infamous Robert Taylor ghetto public housing homes were named in Chicago. She herself was a slum, slum ward running a um, private company that got city money to uh, manage public housing. And they fell into disrepair and ended up getting torn down. One was called Grove Park Plaza. Anyway, she's now in the White House. By the way, she gets 24-hour Secret Service protection. Yeah. Yeah. Why? Nobody knows. She's not, a white, she's not Obama. She's not Biden. But she gets 24 by 7. Anyway, it's crossed my mind that she could have done the birth certificate forgery because I think she's one of those people who's not as smart as she thinks she is. The, the certificate, when the heat is building and Trump is offering money and Corsi's book is coming, and this short-form PDF file, which could have been sent really by a computer. They could have, sure. sent, they could have sure. emailed it, but they sent his private sector attorney uh, and a night flight from Hawaii. I know more. I mean, I believe she made the flight. I don't believe she brought back a PDF file that was his birth certificate, certificate to you. No, no, I, it was all uh, just a just a show. Uh, but uh, so she flew to to Hawaii. Jarrett, I think, could have been the forger because again, she's one of those people who's not as smart as she thinks she is, and she's precisely the kind of person who could create a document and say, "Oh, this is perfect," without realizing that it wasn't perfect yeah, at all. That somebody could come along and. Right. As many people and then, have, and just take it apart. Yeah, sure. And another option would be Loretta Fuddy, who most people have never heard of, um, till December until December. she died. Was it 2012 yeah. when she died in a mysterious plane crash off the coast of Hawaii, in which she was the only victim. Only one. Only one to die. The plane landed pretty much smoothly in the ocean. Everybody escaped with their life jackets, and were all floating alive in the water. And then supposedly she had a heart attack. And then she had this weird connection into this cult that came out of Indonesia, right? Right. So there's the theory that she possibly is the forger. And because the heat was building up, she had to go. Now, whether that's true or not, who knows? You can only speculate. I wasn't there. Uh, she was a member of a cult called the Subud, mm -hmm. S-U-B-U-D cult. I don't know how it's pronounced. It's uh, from in Indonesia. But it also has offices as mm -hmm. or in whatever Washington. you call them around the United, in the United States in um, Seattle mm -hmm. where Stanley and Dunham lived for a while and in Hawaii and Loretta Fuddy she was an, a high-ranking Hawaiian official in this cult Stanley and Dunham mm -hmm. also had connections Obama's mother had connections with the cult when she was in she Indonesia also, right when she was in Indonesia she, right. she lived in Indonesia right. where Obama 
lived from maybe around his fifth, fourth, or fifth birthday till he returned to Hawaii at, in about, oh, maybe at his 10th or 11th birthday, somewhere around that. So he spent roughly five years in Indonesia, during which he went to a school, a Muslim school, and learned about the Koran. Mm-hmm. So if Stanley Ann Dunham was involved with this cult, and Loretta Fuddy was involved with this cult, and they needed to produce a birth certificate, and Loretta Fuddy knew Stanley Ann Dunham in Hawaii. I don't know that that's true, but if she did, which is a possibility, mm-hmm. there's a strong suspicion that she might have been involved in the forgery, especially since she's no longer with us. Now, when you throw all these things together, now remember, Obama's alleged father, Obama Sr. from Kenya, was his family is Sunni Muslim. Indonesia is Muslim. Mm-hmm. Now, what is it Sunni or is it Shia? It's 90-plus percent Sunni. Mm-hmm. Now, why does that mean anything? It's interesting because when you see any conflict around the world, if there's a conflict between Sunnis and Shiite Muslims or between Sunnis and seculars, Obama sides with the Sunnis. Mm-hmm. He does. That's right. Now, why does he do that? What is The suspicion is at least my suspicion is that that's how he was raised. Mm-hmm. He's raised with allegiances mm-hmm. to Sunni Muslim religion. Sure. Now, whether he practice, is a practicing Muslim or an atheist, I don't know. No, but you but come back and you go he back. Have sympathies. If you go back in time, Jack Kennedy is an Irish Catholic. Who is he going to side with? Right. And and that's the whole point of the natural born citizenship clause mm-hmm. in the Constitution, which Americans erringly believe means nothing more than born on U.S. soil. It doesn't mean that. Historically, it has meant born on the United States soil to citizen parents. That's how it was. That's what it meant. You can find history books, court documents, congressional statements. You can find documents from that time period that define it that way. Help me. Come back to, because this is probably my fault. Coming back. Who do you think forged the birth certificate and, I mean, we've been over this so many times. The most glaring examples of why that's a forgery. Yeah, well, the, personally, I think it was Valerie Jarrett. Now, I know other quote birthers mm-hmm. will probably think it's Loretta Fuddy. The suspicion is it's a woman in Hawaii. And there's also so, some belief that there's a guy in Homeland Security that may also be the forger. Yeah, but I... I I'll tend to go with the, the Fuddy or Jarrett theories, uh, and I may be wrong. No, and of course, I'm wrong I mean, about a lot of things yeah, but, until somebody admits it. But that's the uh, what's the, the. But you can now take, remember because he can't. Obama can't hire a forger. No, he has to trust. He has to entrust that task with someone he knows will keep it quiet. So you can't just call anybody. Would he trust Bernardine Dorn? The Dor- Dorn and Ayers had been babysitters mm-hmm. for Obama's kids, mm-hmm. even though he says he hardly knew them. Oh, yeah, or he said that their kids knew each other, and their kids are adults. Right. So Dorn was a possibility, and that's also her history. She could have been trusted. Of course she could have been trusted. Bill Ayers wrote Dreams from My Father. No question. No question he wrote it's, it's, it. And anybody who doubts that, read Jack Cashel's book. I, I agree. Uh, Deconstructing Obama, it, it will persuade anybody. But either, so, either way you approach it, the, the, the short-form certificate is a layered forgery. Yeah, and when you, when you look at the long-form certificate, same way. You cannot take a document, a birth certificate, a letter from mm-hmm. your grandmother, anything. You cannot take a document, place it on a scanner, scan the document, and then manipulate things within that image. Mm-hmm. You can't. With the Obama document... You, you can. can open up the file, mm-hmm. you can click on the registrar's signature stamp, rotate it, and move it around. Oh, yeah. Well, that's impossible. You can't do that with an ordinarily scanned document because it's scanned as one continuous stream yeah. of bits. How can, I mean, how can, and again, other, the guys who have focused on the certificate, and you certainly have, that they can't find another birth certificate that says, that has African as a race. One of the things that those of you who ever looked at birth, the, the Obama birth certificate, it says father's race, and then it says African, which led everyone to believe that some enormously politically correct individual, the forger, 
that I dubbed Jimmy down the hall, and I may change my mind yeah. after reading it. <laughs> but Jimmy couldn't say colored or couldn't say black or couldn't say Negro, but Negro and colored were the choices of words that the state of Hawaii used in 1961. In 1961. They're not politically right. correct terms today, but then, so they can't, can, can, can anyone find another birth certificate where the mother or father were black or it says African as a race, Don? No, and if it exists, I have yet to see it. I agree. And, and you're right. The person who's creating the forgery has to think in terms of 1961. And well, the forger clearly did not. It, then toss in the other aberrations on the form, like uh, different texts. If you type something on a document, the letter A is going to be the same letter A throughout the document. Indeed. Yes, it can be slightly different because of the pressure on the key as you're typing. But it generally will have the same size, shape, and outline. Well, on the Obama document, you have different versions mm -hmm. of letters, which is a clear indication that they cut and pasted documents or items from other documents. It's obvious. Anybody who knows anything about mm -hmm. documents would look at it or, and know it's a fraud forgery. I have read, and I don't have any of this expertise, that an electric typewriter was, to a high degree of probability, was used. Not a computer, but a high, but although a computer is eventually used, it's an electric typewriter, which did not exist in 1961 when these guys did that. Agreed? Right. I mean, that ball, you know, that little thing. Maybe the ball yeah, is just IBM Selectric, right. 1961. Uh, yeah. Yeah, that, I, that could have been. I, I don't and I've, remember I've read the that, and, and I don't know, but the, there are people who claim that the, the the typing could have not existed. Yeah, I don't know when this electric yeah. was first introduced. I know in the 70s, I remember using them at sure. my, my job, but I don't remember so, how early, how far back they go. So, I mean, if we just take, if you would just recap that for a moment, the birth certificate, what's wrong with it? Well, one is, again, is the fact that you can click on various parts of it and move things around, like the registrar signature, which obviously you can't do on a regular scan document. You've got information itself that's inconsistent, like race African. You wouldn't put that on the document in 1961. Then you have the different texts, uh, the different letters, the different characters that look like they came from different typewriters. Well, that you wouldn't get either. Now, nobody if somebody wants to suggest that they typed a word and then took the paper out and put it in a different typewriter to type another word, could that explain it? Yes, but it doesn't make any sense at all. You wouldn't do that. So the, the, there are many, many things wrong with the document that uh, Sheriff, Sheriff Joe Arpaio's cold case, case posse, investigator Mike Zuhl, that team has done a tremendous amount of work and one of these days, they'll hold a press conference, and they'll release their information. And anybody with a rational mind will, will be persuaded that the document is a forgery. And Now, as far, so yeah. again, as far as who did it, I'm putting my money on Valerie Jarrett, but it could have been Loretta Fuddy. Now, it could have been someone else. Sure. The, or the infamous politically correct Jimmy down the hall. Or what, Jimmy down the hall. What I think is interesting, and right we're close to the next pause, what I think is interesting is, that when that dropped, it was right when Trump had offered the money. Uh, the book was coming. There was a drumbeat that had begun about. And again, there are there's this list, folks, of things that have been suppressed. And I'm just going to read them, and you say whether or not we've ever seen them. Original birth certificate, no, no. The marriage license, of uh, uh, um, Obama Dunham marriage license, no. Sotero Dunham marriage license, no. Sotero adoption records, no. Basuki School, one in Indonesia. Indonesia. We've seen one page. Right. That showed he was uh, registered. As a, as a citizen of the country, too, right? As a citizen of Indonesia, yeah. which Pun normally would happen only if you were legally adopted by his step stepfather, Wolo Sotoro, which would make him an Indonesian citizen and not an American citizen. Panahu School records. No. Selective service. Well, we've seen yeah, here we go, right? the, the uh, Selective Service registration form he allegedly filled out at the post office and sent in when he turned 18. But, but that also has some issues with it. And, all right, uh, let's keep going for a second. We'll come uh, back to this. A forgery. Occidental College records. <laughs> no way. Passport records. Not his. We've seen his mother's passport mm -hmm. records, but only back to 1965. The, the State Department has refused to release pre-65 records. Columbia College? No. 
Columbia thesis? No, if he even wrote one. Harvard College Records? I believe not. Harvard Law Review articles? I don't know that he wrote any. Baptism certificates? No. Medical records? No, other than the generic statement from a doctor saying he's healthy. Illinois State Senate records? No, he's kept those close to the best. Illinois State Senate schedule? No. Law practice client list? No. University of Chicago articles? No. And as I said before, if you and I were to go to get our Obamacare, we have to provide them with more personal information than this man has provided. He's become, in his second term, as president of the United States. Sure. And anything you've provided for Obamacare is uh, subject to being hacked, Mm -hmm. which is more than can be said about his accidental college school records. Let us, when we come back this time, begin with his mother. Uh, Stanley Ann Dunham. This guy is terrific. His web, his work is up on our website, 710knus.com. The only people who don't want to disclose the truth are people with something to hide.